Hi everyone, I'm Marcus Olson. You might know me from some Viking Rifle series match, or you might have met me in the Guardian match in Ireland, or perhaps even when I shot the Montana match in the United States. I've been around quite a bit. I've shot a few matches, I won the national championships in field shooting back in 2017, and I've been reloading my own ammo for the past 10 years. And I see a lot of people asking around, especially new shooters, like, hey, what do you do? How, what's your routine? Do you anneal? How often do you tumble your brass? And there's a lot of questions. And I personally like to keep things pretty simple. I uh, just, you know, I bump my shoulders back about 0.06 millimeters, sometimes 0.08. It's not that important, just around that neighborhood. I seat my bullets usually three fourths down the neck. Uh, I run with a quite significant amount of. Uh, uh, you know, jump from the lands on my bullets. Uh, I, I'm rarely, if ever, close to the lands. I don't load up to any insane speeds. I run the 110 grain A tips now at 825 meters a second, and I used to run these 108 grain ELD matches at about 835, 840, and I'll go through the steps that I take when reloading new brass. For practice and then what I'd change when I reload my match ammo and I'll show you groups and standard SDs, standard deviations and extreme spreads but I buy my brass once fired from a friend of mine who shoots factory ammo and a few of his friends shoot them as well so I'm not 100% sure they're from the same chamber so it's a good thing to fire them in your own chamber before you take them to a match to avoid any inconveniences so I got this custom sizing die from my gunsmith Fabian. So if you're getting a barrel from that guy, get one of these as well. They're really nice. Once they've been fired in your chamber, they're super easy to size. Usually these fired brass that I buy is slightly bigger than my chamber, so it'll be a bit on the rough edge to size them. Do a little quick inspection, looking good. I don't ever clean out the primer pockets. I haven't seen that give me any type of better numbers or accuracy. Always brush the inside of the neck. See the primer. And I always length trim the first time before I fire them. I trim them just slightly, short, slightly shorter than the trim length spec from Lapua. Because this is Lapua brass just so I don't have to do it again. I'll never ever again trim my brass. And I got this Giraud here, but you can literally use whatever you want. Perfect length, chamfered on the inside and outside. It saves a lot of time, but it's uh, not necessary gimmick. They're nice to have though. Okay, so practice ammo. Frankfurt Arsenal Press. Works really good, easy to switch out the dice. And for matches that aren't national level, two day matches or big events or anything like that that's super important and long range i'll try to use these because they save time and i'm not very patient when it comes to reloading this one has i measured quite a bunch of them that had an extreme spread of two zero point two six grains and half a grain is 10 meters a second so it should be about five meters a second difference which, when you're looking at a match five, six hundred yards, club level, don't matter that much. They'll still shoot good. I don't shoot A tips on the range for practice and short uh, club matches. They'll just be a waste of bullet. So I still run the 108 grain A tip, which I. Uh, 108 grain ELD match, sorry. Which I've had great success with for the past two years. I always make sure to measure the first few bullets that I make for my batch to see that the seat in depth is correct. Yep, base to OGI 47.6, just where I want it. Okay, so now for match ammo. That's brass that's been shot 
one or multiple times in my chamber. I try to keep them separate so I don't mix up a batch of brass that's been shot six times that's been shot one time in my chamber. So over here I got brass that's been shot four times maybe. They're still fresh, they're still good. I don't load them that hard so they last a long time and especially with the dye it doesn't oversize them too much. I don't, as I said I, I don't ever anneal. I don't find any use of that. I did a test earlier but as long as you keep your batches separate you don't need to buy a big annealing machine. And honestly I tried to mix up a little bit like fired one time, fired four times. It's not that big of a difference actually. Oh, forgot the sizer. Mm, maybe should have had a little bit more lube on that one. Brush the neck. Primer. I like these bench mountain primers because you can really get the good feel on when you're seating the primer if your primer pockets are starting to get loose. If it's too easy to seat the primer, I usually just discard the brass on the range. That means they're pretty much done for. And for match ammo, I run this thing. Zero. Twenty-nine grains, exactly. I run the same charge for my 108s as I run for the A-tips. It keeps everything pretty easy. They both shoot. Throw it in there. A tip. Should be about at 46.9 base 2 jive. 46.90. Yep. So how often do I tumble my brass? Well, I hardly ever do. I clean them off. I tumble them if they've been on a muddy range and I don't want to run them through my sizing die and ruin that one. So that means I tumble them with the old primers inside. And I don't tumble them to get any debris out on the inside. I tumble them so they don't wear on my sizing die. Other things that I've found helps a lot with getting down your ES and SDs is to brush the inside of your neck. Uh, usually when you fire them, there's still carbon in there in various amounts. So if you brush them with just a nylon brush, as this one mounted to my bench, it keeps it nice and consistent. You can really feel when you're seating the bullet that it's a way easier process and you get consistent neck tension, which is the key to low ES and ST, the neck tension. And I'll show you a nice little picture what how I used to load up my 108s during this summer. Pretty much the same method as I showed you on the A-tips now. But I'll put it up here. A nice little picture of two groups with a total of 15 rounds and that looks very good. I didn't do anything more to the brass or anything. I had like four or five times firings on that brass and no annealing, nothing like that. And here you see 15 rounds of speed. I shot them a bit faster during the summer uh, for a long range match. You can see that the speed is about 850 something. I've since then backed off, since I didn't find it necessary to even run it at that speed. 108s and 110s in the like 825, 835 mark is more than enough to get you on the podium of any match. The speed is not the key. It's low recoil, consistent loads. And if you have a moderate speed, your loads will be consistent for a longer amount of time. It will not wear out your barrel. A BR that's shooting this speed, probably a good 3,000 rounds of barrel life, maybe more. I don't know. I haven't shot out of the barrel. My, the one I pulled to put this one in had about 3,000 to it. Still shot good, hadn't seen any decline in velocity. I could, But I pulled it because I was supposed to go to a big match. And uh, I wanted a fresh barrel because you don't want to go to a big match with a barrel that's gone 3,000 rounds. And I didn't have a spare, which I usually do. I normally have two barrels. But other than that, when you're looking for a load, try to get a, a lot of people do the whole, you know, they try to find a node, but from what I found when I do the ladders is that, with, especially with the BR and other very efficient cartridge cases, is that it'll be just a nice little, 
inclined like that. So every 0.5 grains will be 10 meters a second. And if it's not, it just probably should be. It's an anomaly. So when you shoot that ladder, you shoot it on paper at 100 meters. And what you want is to, for them to have the same point of impact. You look for a speed that you like and you shoot at the same target. Bam, bam, bam. And in a while you'll see they start to group up in the same amount. You see there's a incline and then you see them start grouping and then they go somewhere else. That in the middle is where you want to be. After that you pick the load in the middle of that. And then you start playing a little bit with seat and depth. And then what you try to find is the same thing. Up and down. You go from up and you back it off. You, same thing with the charge weight. You want it to go into a node where the point of aim, point of impact, is the same for multiple seating depths. So think of it as throat eroding. Your bullet will be further off from the lands for every shot that you'll take. So what you want to do is when you start from the top and go to the bottom, you'll see that it goes to a place and then you'll see have the same, 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 same. That's where you want to be, because when your throat starts eroding, you'll still have the same point of impact and still about the same speed. In your accuracy will probably not decline for a very long time. That's at least how I do it. And as you can saw, I don't really bother that much with being super, super thorough with my hand loads. I brush the inside of the neck, I dump a powder charge that's good enough for the distance I'm supposed to shoot since multiple charges were about the same point of impact anyway. It's not that important and your extreme sped at short ranges, 500 meters, it's also not that important. As long as it's around 5, I don't know, 15 meters a second if you're going to match with 4 500 meter. If you want to go further, drop sub 10 meters a second. Group size, anything below 15 millimeters is more than good enough. Uh, nice little memory to share with you. I went to a match two years ago before I got the BR with my 6555. It was with a bullet that I just hadn't gotten to shoot. It was just shit. I'm not gonna name drop anything, but my barrel didn't like it. I couldn't get it below 20, 25 millimeters. Extreme spread were pretty good. I mean, I was in the 10 meters a second department. Good enough, match was about 600 meters. I went to the match without any hope of ever winning it, but I saw it as good practice. I just did as good as I could on every stage. I ended up winning it by not a whole lot, but with a little. And looking back at it, with having a gun that was, you know, you know, maybe three quarters of a minute, you know, 20 something millimeters, and winning a match, that kind of tells you what's important and what's not. And it's to practice and take it easy, play it cool. You don't want to rush it. In far too many matches you see people just shoot their last shot and there's 30 seconds left and they dropped five or three. With 30 seconds left, you could have made those rounds count. So time management, play it cool and have good enough loads and don't spend too much time at the reloading bench. Spend time out there practicing and going to matches because chances are your load is good enough.